Hi guys, if you're watching this film right now, it means that the photos I've just been taking have come out. And um, there's going to be a, a funny thing that happens in the film. Yeah, a bit of a, a nighttime encounter. Another one, at least it's not doggers this time. Well, 10 minutes ago I was watching telly, quite comfy indoors, and then I noticed that it was a beautiful full moon out here. So I've had an idea at the back of, in the back of my mind for a while now to shoot 4x5 at night. I've done the, did some of these shots that I'm going to do this evening on the Hasselblad, but um, I wanted to just try up in the game and going for a, a few sheets of 4x5, uh, taking on board what I learned while using medium format when it comes to the um, exposures. Um, so I'm going to do that first, f8, 90 seconds, then I'm going to do another sheet at f11, I don't know, three minutes, it's not that scientific. And then I'll be developing all the films tonight for 12 minutes, which is a ISO 800 um, development. Um, yeah, actually, uh, 800 reduced down slightly. Yeah, there's a car there now. Ninety seconds is just such a long time when you're uh, wondering if you've made a mistake or not. Something seemed wrong when I clicked the shutter. I got six sheets of film. So I don't want to use too much up here and now. That sounds okay. Just gonna take a guess. F11. Three minutes. It's so unscientific this, but I always have these pleasant surprises. It always feels like everything, everything's going to go wrong, and um, it always seems to be okay. Well, that was the longest three minutes of my life, and I timed it really well because now the uh, Sainsbury's delivery truck is just going round the corner. I didn't want that, so that was good timing. Would it be nice if there was sort of someone standing completely still smoking a cigarette for three minutes, but the chances of that are pretty slim, I reckon. Okay, so I headed towards St Ives and I could just see in front of me that the sky was uninteresting. It's a sort of bank of cloud on that side of the coast. So I headed back on myself, back to the south coast of Cornwall. Uh, I live on a very narrow peninsula, so it's not that far from one side to the other. And I've come down to the Lizard Point Lighthouse, which it's all looking pretty epic. How I get a photo on a large format, how I get it in focus, and how I choose my um, exposure time is gonna be nothing more than guesswork and, and luck. That's the truth of it. So I've shot two sheets. I only really want to do four sheets tonight because I've got plans for tomorrow. Um, so yeah, well, I'm going to stumble around in the dark and see if I can take a photo. I spent so long under the dark cloth, I just came out from under the dark cloth and this little bullock is standing next to me. Oh god, it's turning into a comedy movie. And it's getting windy.
live in two minutes and you'll see what I do with my torch, my little trick. Okay guys, well thank you for joining me again and uh, sorry about the atrocious video quality. Um, a few things, I mean as you can see I've only come away with a couple of photos really but that's the nature of the game. Um, compositionally they're okay but I know I can do better. Uh, it's really hard to compose an image when you can hardly see what's going on. Likewise focusing is really tough. Uh, it wasn't too bad on the church one because I could focus the 5.6 150mm lens on the clock, get it as close as I thought it was and yeah, as it is, it was actually okay. Um, funny enough, the F8 and F11, there's hardly any difference in, in quality of image between one and the other. And likewise, exposure-wise, the exposures are different but the images are so similar. Uh, kind of a testament to the power of HP5. Um, I'm amazed by its ability to just suck in the light and give you a, a great image at night if you just leave it switched on and, and sucking in that light. Um, development wise I'm just over the moon with 510 Pyro uh, with that 12 minute development for the night stuff. I mean if you look at the grain of the images it's incredible. You'd think they were on Delta. Um, exposure times. Uh, you know, it's not that I've done a whole roll of uh, medium format before uh, and very, very carefully bracketed it and logged everything. And I've had exposures between 30 seconds and two minutes. And sometimes the, diff the only difference you can tell is a few star trails, perhaps, and more movement in the sky. Uh, it's maybe the film sucks in most of the light during the early stages, then you're getting into reciprocity, so the length of the exposure doesn't seem to be so significant. Um, let's have a look at this image here. This is the first one I shot. So this was shot at f8 um, And if you zoom in, I mean, I'm just amazed really at the quality That I'm getting from 4x5 and I can hardly see a damn thing inside that glass You know, I'm under that hood just doing my best to see what's going on This is the f11 It's barely worth showing you really because they're so similar and then this one here, um, I did crop it actually. I felt like I needed to crop it a little bit. So I've lost about 10% on the left hand side. Scratch through this one. So I'm glad that I um, did two sheets on it. This one here is the long exposure at two minutes. You can see the star trails. First of all, I thought I had a load of dirt on the neck. And uh, this one here is cleaner. I haven't got any scratches. You can still see the star trails starting to show up. but. I'm amazed that was such a rush job um, and I just couldn't see anything I really you know the video footage is deceptive it makes it look so much brighter than it is so yeah there's you know shooting film at night it's not rocket science the film that HP5 it just seems to um, do all the legwork for you really and um, don't be afraid to overexpose so anyway that's it I've uh, waffled on a little bit Thank you for watching and I'll see you again sometime.